Hi, I'm Azira. I'm Rowena. And I'm Omar. And we're from the Ethnic East Support Team. We've decided to make a film about the food and cultural diversity here in Swansea, especially here on St. Helens Road. So what we did was visit different restaurants and talk to their owners and find out how and why they came to Swansea and what inspired them to come to Swansea and open up restaurants. And we also talked about the kind of food they present to their customers. We decided to call the, the project Curry Chips and Cappuccino and we hope you enjoyed the film. Thank you. Hi, my name is Samara. Would you like to tell me your name, your date of birth and your job? Hello, I'm Francesca. I was born the 3rd of March 1968 and this is my little business which is an Italian deli and restaurant. Um, are you local to Swansea? Yes, I was born here, but both my parents were Italian. Where from to, um, Padma, Italy? in the north of Italy. Hi, um, would you like to tell us your name and where were you born? My name is Paulette Pelosi and I was born in Cardiff. How did you come to Swansea? Well, I was born here, but my parents came over because it was poor from where they came from and they came over here to better their lives. My grandparents came from Piccinisco in central Italy midway between Rome and Naples, up in the mountains, and my grandfather and grandmother came here in 1907 to, for him to be a collier in Astrid in the Ronda. What do you know of the history of the Italians that came to Swansea? It's interesting. I think it's because, with all nationalities, why would you become what we now call an economic refugee? You know, you, you live in a beautiful land. Where they lived is absolutely stunningly beautiful. They had acres of land. They grew figs and olives and vines and everything. But poverty. Many Italian families who came to work in Wales, um, some in the late 1800s, like the Cascarinis, most famously known as the most successful Joe's ice cream in Swansea. Did they open a restaurant or...? No. Uh, my mother came over first and she was a nanny for an Italian family. And my dad came over about 10 years later and they met in this country. And they married and then they bought this fish shop, as, when it was a fish and chip shop. Why did your grandparents or your father end up opening food places like cafes and snack bars? I don't think probably any job underground after being a, out in the open in Italy would have suited him. So the idea was to come here and um, open cafes, snack bars, anything like that. What cafes and snack bars did your families open and where were they? Well, they had several in Swansea. There was one in Dilwyn Street, which is the one I was brought up in, literally around the corner here. Um, there was one in Craddock Street. Um, they had quite a number. And by 1920, my grandfather did his research and decided to spread the area by moving, buying a shop in South End in Mumble. So they were all over the place. So do you remember what was on the early menus in the cafe slash snack bars? People like basic things like egg, and, egg on toast or beans on toast or egg, beans and chips or sausage, egg and chips and just very basic foods. I can remember when I was young, my friend saying she went to the Burlington, which was an Italian restaurant, and she was raving about spaghetti and chips. And my mother said to her, you don't eat spaghetti and chips together. People seemed to love to order milkshake or even something they loved, which was very basic, but I clearly remember, would be to have some, I suppose, an ice cream soda, so ice cream and they pour either orangeade or lemonade and it would bubble up and they, and they loved that. My father, on the Italian boiler, always had a big teapot of fresh tea. And when he did make coffee for people, again, that was considered a bit exotic. How did the Second World War affect your family and the, and the Italian community in Swansea? Well, when we get to the 1940 and when we get to um, Italy, coming into the war against Britain, of course, everything changed. And uh, Churchill, the leader in Britain, uttered the immortal phrase, collar the lot. Suddenly, my grandfather became known as an enemy alien. And despite having three sons in the British forces, he was rounded up as an enemy alien from the shop in South End in Mumbles. They were interned, taken away from their shops all around Wales and put on a ship, the Arendora Star, that was torpedoed and sank with the loss, enormous loss of life, including the 53 Welsh Italians. 
We didn't know what happened to the Pelosi's or the Di Marco's or the Conti's or the Rossi's. One minute they were in the shop, running the shop, the next minute they were taken away. It's a bit obscure as to what happened. A lot of the Italian women bravely carried on running the shops. They, they suffered a lot of um, knee-jerk reaction from the people of Swansea because once war was declared, suddenly these Italians who'd been living in Swansea since the 1900s, were, you know, they thought they were enemies and they started smashing the windows and that. When they first came over here, every month they'd have to go to the police station with a card, an alien card, that they'd have to report to the police station to say that they were still here. So they were made to feel like aliens mm -hmm. when they first came over. Now you haven't got that problem at all. Yeah. So they came in World War? No, no. Oh. My mother came over in 1956. My dad came over in 1965. Oh, okay. But in that era, you still had to go and uh, report in the police station every month. Um, have you had any difficulties setting up in, so like your family setting up in Swansea? Years ago, not now though. Not now now it's, it's a lot easier for everybody because there's so many different nationalities. Everybody's just integrated with everybody else. Do you feel like the Italian community has decreased or improved? Or There's a lot more Italians now than ever. Because things are so bad in Italy, they're all coming over here now to try and make themselves a bit better, but there's a lot of Italians coming over. Hey, my name is Ignazio Monli, and uh, the restaurant is called Moni's Fish Bar. I'm from Sardinia. Because we're away from Italy, and because you're away from Italy, yeah. um, we've been brought up very traditionally Italian. Um, to maintain it because I think if we, we'd been brought up in Italy, we would have changed with the times. I have a whole day without rain, we're just not that lucky. It's the kind of, you know, the family feel, and you know, when people come into the chip shop, they become an extended part of our family, and they love that. And it's the closeness and the talking, and it's, it's, it's it, even though Swansea is big, it's small at the same time. You know lots of people and it, it's very friendly. I'm a very friendly people yeah. in Swansea anyway. I mean, it's difficult to tell. I'd say obviously no, it's more second generation Second Italians. generation of Italian, so it seems less, but it's... Really more. Yeah. I think it's like anything in any kind of subculture. It's like it becomes more and more diverse, so Italians might not just be Italians, they'll be English Italians, Welsh Italians, or whatever. Good you mix know? Of so them, yeah. you never know, it's going to be a nice cocktail. Of I firmly state, and I'm proud to state, that I'm Welsh Italian. Um, I think there's a little bit of English in my mother's family, but I stick to the Welsh Italian. And it sounds very cute and neat to say that the Welsh and the Italians are similar, but I actually do find that they are, and I'm not the first person to say it. I mean, somebody famously said that um, the Welsh are the Italians in the rain. Italians. I mean, obviously, um, more Italians are going to move to Swansea, to the UK. It's just going to happen the same as British people move around the world. Yeah. Um, but there'll always be a community of some sort. Who knows what size it will be. some money, you know, work and earn some money and get a better life. My grandfather who migrated uh, from Bangladesh to the UK, um, some, you know, say it was due to economical migration, but when, when I asked about it, it was mainly because Bangladesh had been robbed of all his riches and his infrastructure and everything. The war between Bangladesh, Pakistan, or what it was back then, East Pakistan and West Pakistan, started in 1970. So then we end up with a civil war, you know, then war, you know, they're killing a lot of people. It was over basically development and taxing. <laughs> that Pakistan were taxing, taking taxes, but they were only developing one side, East Pakistan. They weren't developing West Pakistan, which is now known as Bangladesh. So they wanted to come earn that money. They kind of felt it was owed to them, you know. So they came with that attitude that they would earn the money and obviously send it back home to build their empire, whatever it is that they had there previously before the war. I don't think it was the main factor why my family came to the UK, but it was definitely had some influence of my father yeah. leaving, obviously working here and sending money back home to my mother and just leaving them there. 
he decided to bring them here and look, keep them closer where they're safer, where he feels they'll be safer. Uh, my grandfather came in the 1950s to the UK, but not Wales. Um, he came in um, initially to work in the factories in Birmingham. Well, I came when I was 14 years of age. And uh, first I went to school for a little well. Then I started working in the, in the industry. And they would always share their foods with, the, with their colleagues. So all their colleagues would say to them, you should sell this, I'd buy this. So that's where the idea of the restaurants came to my grandfather's generation. But when I came first, yeah. I was very young, you know, and uh, some restaurants there the shing was a bit higher. Yeah. So I can't reach there, you know, when I start working. So I have to use the milk <laughs> crate to, you know, hire myself. I, yeah. I go hire myself and, uh, you know, start wash dishing, dishes, you know. So after the factories closed, they all decided to split across the country, find locations where people had not be, uh, come across Indian food. Well, not, they called it Indian, but Bengali food, really. Work in the kitchen, I see what the chef doing, the cook doing. So slowly, slowly, step by step, I learned it and I went to become a chef. At the time my father was living in London, um, shortly afterwards he had a he had a business proposition and that's what brought my family uh, and myself down to Swansea. Um, so that's when my grandfather, I still, we still don't know why, but he just chose Wales. And out of Wales he chose Chlenechli. So that's where we originally um, settled was Chlenechli. Because my father moved to Swansea as he had an opportunity in a restaurant to buy a chef, cook it as a chef. And sometimes Road is still there, the Anakali. Um, there he opened the first restaurant, which was called Curry Garden. So that's uh, how they started off. Because there, there was a niche in the market and people were experimenting, I think, with, with curries and stuff. And it was taken off down here. We bring the tunduri with us in 1980. Before that was a lot of tunduri restaurant. When, when he first started, you had a choice of uh, like chicken vindaloo and chicken curry. And you had a choice of boiled rice or peanut rice. And that was it. That was the menu. Why didn't they name it uh, Bangladeshi? Um, different people have different answers for it. I think it's, 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 it's a national thing. It's from the time of the British Raj, I think. That's where they, when the Brits initially um, acquired a taste for the spices. I remember when one of my relatives said to me that it's because Bangladesh was such a small country, people wouldn't know and it would make them feel... Um, Oh, well, we don't know, maybe it's like something we won't like. But Indian, obviously India was a big country. It had a lot of history links with uh, Britain. It's from the, colon from the colonial period. So we're going back to when they colonized India for about a hundred odd years or so. used to be when the people, a lot of young stars come in the late night in the Indian industry and you know, they try to eat and go without paid. But I think it was a lot worse for my father's generation. I mean, when I was running the, the Thai restaurant in probably in the 90s, there's many occasions that I remember once when one of the windows was smashed, many occasions of people having a meal there and sort of legging it doing a runner without paying and yeah. Even sometimes if you don't serve them, you know, we refuse them, we are closing time or something, you know. Still sometimes they break the window, you know, kick the window from the outside. With people like my father, they, they, they came here to make money <clears throat> and for a better life not to cause trouble. So the way they looked at it is, was that they didn't like calling the police. My father wouldn't Call the police. Was, you know, we thought if the police came to your property, it, it wasn't a good, uh, it wasn't a good like sort of advertisement for your business. You know. I, I mean, I, I, as a Muslim, I don't drink, so I'm turned up to work in a place where people are drunk, and I've never seen anyone drunk before in my life. And then when they'd get aggressive, I wouldn't know what to do. It was a, there was an undertone of racism in it. You you wouldn't tend to get it in the Chinese. 
because I think uh, Bruce Lee established himself quite well in the film. So, yeah, you didn't, you, you, you never hear of it so much in the Chinese restaurants. The people's attitude have definitely changed towards us. I mean, when I started off, I noticed that people, they treated us a bit, when I say a bit funny, they were nice, but they were, sometimes they, some people would be degrading the way they talk to you. And I've noticed over the so many years, people's attitude have changed towards us. They're more friendly, more polite. My earliest memories are probably of Swansea. I, I don't recall much prior to that. So Swansea's pretty much home. See yourself, yes, we are Bengali in terms of ethnicity, but at the same time, you know, we're Welsh. So you kind of just adapt and, you know, make the best of where you are. It was fantastic. I wouldn't want to have grown up anywhere else. To be honest, when I reflect on my childhood, I think I had the best childhood you know, a child could have growing up. Um, it was just full of fun. Um, you know, it was the community spirit. I do feel Swansea is my home because um, my earliest memories are here. I've even got a GCSE in Welsh. I faced racism, but at the same time, I had really good Welsh friends, white friends. So it was a matter of finding the balance, I think. When you experience the negative, and you experience the positive. If you focus on the positive, then you can deal with the negative. Um, kids my sort of generation and maybe a few years before me who grew up in Swansea, who didn't know any different, thought, you know, we weren't about to tolerate that sort of behavior, if you know what I mean? Because we didn't see ourselves as any different to anyone else, so, so we, wouldn't ex we wouldn't take it. From morning till night we would be playing. My white friends used to come to my house, have food with us, because again, the Bengali food would be popular. And we'd just be in and out of each other's houses, playing. It's just, it was just endless fun. I'm a Muslim, so I follow the teachings of Islam. And it's, for me, it's a way of life. It is, it's, it's, I wake up every day and I live a certain way. I try to act a certain way. And I try not to offend people, I get along with people. For me, it's a complete, complete way of life, a code of life. Um, I have a relative, um, and he, he's part of this organisation that he travels around the whole world, basically. And what, one thing he said to me, he's not Bengali, but one thing he said to me, what, was, what really surprised him, of all the countries he's vid visited, he found the Bengali community to be the most hosp one of the most hospitable communities in the world. We are peaceful people and we're friendly. You can get along with us, you can talk to us. Food is a big thing in the Bengali culture. They love sharing their food and they love feeding people. Less. They are feeders and I'm known as a feeder as well and I always blame it to Bengali culture. <laughs> I will say we are peaceful people and uh, our community is you know, studying good as well. Now children are getting in a college, you know, doctor, engineer, accountants. So we work hard, but we want our children to be, be become a professional, you know, teacher, everything. The traditional role of a Bengali woman or a stereotype of a Bengali woman no longer exists, actually, even though maybe society still perceives it to be the case. But if I think if they actually looked into that culture or studied that society, you'd see that Bengali women have a part to play in every aspect of British culture. All, all the religions preach the same thing, you know, be nice to your neighbours, be nice to your friends, be nice to your parents, be nice to nature, don't trash the planet, it's, only, it's the only one you've got, you know, rather than listening to what, what you read on the newspapers or see on TV, go out, meet a Muslim meet a Muslim or you've probably got one in your classroom or you've got one that lives next door to you or there might be one that serves you a curry in your local Indian and you know make an effort to get to know them and, and rather than judging what you see on TV you know make up your own mind. When I first came to Swansea where I came for, for university and uh, after university I stayed and uh, I tried and somehow it was just co a coincidence I got into the restaurant trade and I started up as a waiter and uh, I saw there's a potential of, uh, of a good business and uh, so that's and when I went along with uh, two others to open the restaurant. 
marching on after 20 years. <laughs> so we, we, we're doing okay. We're doing something right. We sp I spent two years in Hong Kong before my parents decided to send me over. Well, no one at all. You, you was, I, I couldn't speak a word of English. It was quite exciting for me. <laughs> you, you first, uh, we, we come, I come from university, so I found lots of students that tend, tend to be a bit more friendly. And they're, I, it's just the, the, the biggest communities are giving me more of a scare. But it's all right. When I first came to this country, Chinese food was very popular already. It was a, it was a boom time of uh, takeaways and restaurants. That's where you can find lots of takeaways and uh, lots of Chinese restaurants open by the time. But it's just, it's still very popular. The, the weekly diets, lots of people just come here if once a week. I mean, they have a fixed date for them to have a Chinese food. <laughs> When do you become a native? I don't know. <laughs> I suppose after 30 odd years since in, in Swansea, I, I, I must become a native, yes. All my children are born and brought up in this country. Brought up, brought up in Swansea. They're, 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 more, they are, they're, they're Welsh before anything else. That Swansea, you could face lots of, in terms of people, um, in the community, there was lots of um, a racism about you. More, or less, you more or less can encounter that every every week. But nowadays, it's pe people are more a lot more tolerant towards each other. I found it much life much easier. But the children will grow up, become tolerant towards other races and from other cultures, and hopefully they will realize we are just part. We just another other, just part of human beings. Well, if anything, we can contribute towards the integration of, of our Chinese community into the wider Welsh community. I, I can be, definitely be very proud of that. So, um, could you please tell us your name and the name of your restaurant? My name is Nimat Lawa Ismail. I'm Kurdish from north of Iraq. Uh, my restaurant is named Al Diwan. So could you tell us a bit about why you left Iraq and the difficulties you faced? Uh, because of the politics. No, something. Otherwise, he, everyone heard about Saddam, how Saddam, how he was it. If you don't be with him, he seen you are his enemy. And I cannot be with Saddam and his regime in that time because he's killing, killing people, um, destroying everything, uh, no humanity, no that life. Right now people, they have no Iraqi people, majority of them, they have no their own, own passport. That's very, very simple things. Um, I was not born here, I'm carrying British passport. That's why I'm proud of our, our Britain. Did you um, leave by yourself, or did you leave with your family as well? I left them there after eight years when I granted as a, a British citizen. Then I went back home, and I didn't come there after a couple of years. Did you um, face any barriers coming here, like say language barriers? Did you know the language already, English? I learned it myself. When I was in, in London, Every day I was getting metro, the newspaper, small dictionary in my pocket, only reading and translating the big market on the top. 
day by day, day by day, when I need anything, I call my brother. He is very clever. And my sister-in-law, my brother, they go masters in English language in London. So um, you told us that uh, you're a religious person, and surely you hold another, um, other principles and values that are, that are inherent of your uh, culture and tradition. Um, coming here to Britain, from Iraq, and here to Britain, um, did you did you think that you needed to leave some of these values or principles, or did you, did you, did you or did you think that you, you needed to adapt new values and principles? How did that work for you? It was a little bit hard in the beginning, but later on, and and fi I found out the life the one in my mind equals there is no between there is no any difference between me and you or whoever all we are human all we are living in the uk since i am 10 12 years old i was thinking why this everyone is no equals you have money i had i don't have that's a different things but when when we go to the hospital shouldn't be any different between me and you, I'm not bigger than you. I'm not more posh than you. All we are equal. All we are human. All we are British, Iraqi, whoever. I do believe God, and I do believe Adam and Eve, and we all come from Adam and Eve. That's mean you are my sister, you are my brother. She's my sister, she's my brother. What led you to come to here to Swansea and come up with the idea of having a restaurant in St. Helens Road? This is not my dream. I used to be a, I used to be a football player back home. Because of Saddam's region and politics, things like that, I left country. When I came to UK, uh, I was living in uh, London, working as a painter and decorator. Some of my friends here oh, for me, he, he was living in Cardiff, asked me, there's a restaurant, you want to buy it? I said, without any anything, straight away I said yes. What are the important things that make a dish Iraqi? How is it different to other Middle Eastern food? I'll give you an example. We got very famous uh, kufta, which is called Iraqi kufta kebab. This kufta kebab, after we mix mix it, we marinate it with a special marination, and we don't mix it like like Persian people or Turkish people or other Arab people. We mix all mix in the mixer once. So apart from your food, um, how else do you express your culture to your customers? Ah, uh, I have no customer to go out without smell on smell on a face. How long have you lived in Swansea? Uh, about four years. Four years. Four years. I want to know when you first came to Swansea or the UK, but did you face um, any racism from other people? No. Never ever. And Always when when I came to Swansea, start when I started, uh, I they they catch me by smile. I see Swansea, it's most beautiful city, most pe friendly people living in. I I think this is I I don't put rubbish like that on the street because this is my city. This my, my kids they was born in here. This is what I wanted to be in my, my future here. That's why my, like a mother, we, we, look, we said, this city looks like a mother, you have to look after her. Well, we do hope you've enjoyed that short film. We've learned a lot just through food, we've learned a lot about their cultures, their heritage, their history, the, the struggles they went through and their success. The people were lovely and kind with interesting stories. Um, we really thank them for welcoming us and giving us their time. Yeah, so thank you everyone who participated in this film. We really, really appreciate it. And this film would not be successful without you all. Thank you. Sure. Thank you.